I'm Jen Allen. I'm a potter because I like to work with my hands. It makes me feel comfortable when my hands are busy. And I really think it's important to be able to contribute to what's unique and beautiful in the world. So for me, besides the volume of the cup, there's three really important parts of the cup that I'm focusing on when I'm making them. One is the rim, so how you're gonna drink from it because that's, the cup form is the one form that you have the most kind of intimate connection to. It's the only one that you put to your mouth. So I wanna make that a pleasant experience. Um, also the handle, it's a form that you touch or you hold with your hands, so the handle's important. And then thirdly, it's the surface texture, so the tactile quality on the outside of the cup. I learned how to make pots both working at the university and also working for a full-time potter. So um, I went to undergraduate school and touched clay for the first time, was really excited, immediately changed my major, and at the same time, I found a job working for a wholesale production potter in the state of Alaska. So that kind of education, both in the academic setting and in the real world kind of business setting, kind of helped form this foundation of what I thought a studio potter's life might look like. So I was getting kind of very technical knowledge, learning about efficiency, learning how to maintain a studio. Um, working for the potter and then on the other hand I was learning how to become a thoughtful designer, how to craft my objects to the best of their ability, how to make thoughtful pieces. So I just keep decorating the cup until I get kind of what, I, what I'm looking for and w the nice thing about the slip trail decoration is this is going to remain a raised decoration so it's going to add some kind of tactile interest to the surface of this piece. So for me there's clay is like no other material in that it records the process of touch for the process to be frozen in time for eternity. I'm thinking about when I saw this exhibition of Bernini's sculptures at the Met Museum, and how this process mark would trail and end with a fingerprint, and to know that that fingerprint was Bernini's is just something that is magical. Just that, I guess, it's the human connectedness between the objects, the maker and the user, that is just really invigorating. I use porcelain, and one of the reasons why is my first experience with ceramic objects was at my grandmother's house. We would have Thanksgiving dinner and she had a wall of china cabinets and they were all kind of on lockdown until the holiday meal was set. But those objects are really beautiful and they're special in that they dress the holiday table. The thing that I don't like about those objects as far as my own work is that they're not accessible on a daily basis and for me that's really important. Like I really want people to not be afraid to use my work from day to day. So I like the glimmer of it maybe looking like it could be set in a china cabinet but the intention of it is that it's made you know for daily use. So I like both raised decoration as well as recessed so both additive and subtract subtractive. And that's just because I want, again, this, the surface of this piece to have not only tactile interest, but visual interest. And this creates another layer of depth in the surface. So I make handles that are all different sizes, you know, because everybody's hands are different sizes. So the handle is important. That's the way that people interact with mugs, pitchers. And that's why a lot of my forms all have handles, because I really like working on how to make an experience with a handheld object pleasant. Uh, I also am really interested in the lip and what that experience is. And then finally, it's this tactile surface. I think about the Peanuts comic strip with Linus and his little blankie and how, how that's like, for him, that blanket, or with children too, there's that comfort level, like with the pacifier or with the blanket that feeling, that texture makes them feel comfortable. That's something for me that I'm trying to, you know, inject in this work, is I'm trying to make the surface somewhere, something that's tactile and interesting. 
so I'll just carve this all around. I also want this decoration to continue onto the bottom of the piece because I think the bottom of work is often a, a place that's overlooked. So thinking about what it looks like in the dishwasher or at the bottom of the sink, all of those things to me are important. So continuing this decoration down into the bottom is something that I've started to do. So I pull a lot of inspiration from a variety of sources. You know, I'm crazy about historical ceramics. You know, Oribe ware is one that comes to the front of my mind as I'm talking, um, and also British medieval ware. And those kind of forms, um, and also the surfaces, I think, help inform my work. I look at times in design where there's a sense of optimism or progress. So post-war textiles, Edo period kimono, um, arts and crafts era, you know, so I look to those for, you know, inspiration as well.